So today I got the uh, motor mocked up on the engine plate and what I had to take a measurement on was how much past the motor plate when the motor's mounted is this uh, sprocket here, this little little tiny sprocket. So it uh, looks like it's about one and three quarter. Uh, I may even go about one and five eighths just because I do have some adjustment on the motor that way. Right now I've got it pushed as far this way as it can go. Um, so, so that's great. So now I know exactly where I can position this relative to uh, to the crank on the axle and just make sure that the motor's lined up because this thing from go power sports You know, I can slide her this way and this way for chain tension But she doesn't really have any adjustment left to right. So got to make sure I weld that thing on right. Otherwise uh, She won't be working too well So I went ahead and just pulled the gas tank off here. It had a bunch of old gas anyway So I went and dumped all that old gas out. I am gonna end up reusing this tank I think it carries or holds a little bit more gas than the uh, that blue one that came on the Duramax so Plus, I, I kind of like the location. It's pretty simple to fill it up, all that good stuff. But I just moved it out of the way because what I want to do next here is uh, just clean up all this metal, get this all to bare metal so I can uh, kind of get it mocked up. And then when I go to weld it, it's already already prepped and ready for me. So I'm going to take care of that right now with this guy. So for mounting this to your engine plate, we had a little change of plan. So originally, I was planning on using these two uprights I made to uh, come off this bottom bar up and then hold the plate. But now that I cut this here because of the sprocket, I'm thinking uh, it might be a little bit better uh, I cut this piece out. I just got to tap her in with my hammer, but I'm thinking uh, she's just going to go right there to right there. And that's going to help uh, put some strength back into this cross member. And then I really don't need this part at all. There's, it's not supporting anything. I might just keep it, but I'll probably just chop that off and just kind of leave this section on that way if you hit. Um, you know some big log or something on a trail it would kind of lift the uh, lift the frame up rather than just hitting the sprocket So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work fine So I'll get this tacked into place and then the motor mounts is gonna sit on top of here It'll get fully uh, welded across the top there and then just some basically some tacks there won't be a lot of contact here But I think uh, that'll probably be plenty strong. So Whoop. So let's get to it. Far all burned in Don't uh, mind my horrible welding skills, but She's in there, she ain't going nowhere. We'll sand her down, put some paint on her, she'll be good. I also tacked the, the motor mount in place. I just tacked it real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set the motor on there, just make sure everything still looks good, and then I'll finish uh, burning all that in next. All right, there we have her, so she's all burned in. Again, don't judge the horrible welds. I suck, but uh, I'll do what I can. It'll hold, she's strong. I could pick the whole girl up Ugh. based off that thing, so. Should be pretty good. Uh, now I'll stick the motor on again, just for uh, for another mock-up. All right, got her sitting in place. She's uh, just about perfectly lined up there, so uh, that'll probably be where she's gonna stay. <clears throat> I can't really put her too much for, more uh, forward. I wanna be able to get to that oil, uh, oil checker, oil fill. And uh, I'm keeping the battery here, so I don't really wanna move it. So it looks like that should be just about enough um, where I can put the battery in and still have uh, some room there, some clearance to be able to check the oil. So this is what it looked like without the uh, factory gas can on it. So I'll put back the Zircon one. And then of course there's kind of this big, uh, big platform, like little wing thing. And then we have a, a huge wing that I bolted on there. So that's gonna look, that's gonna look pretty cool. So I'm gonna paint it today. And uh, then tomorrow I can put it in for the last time and uh, start plumbing like the fuel and I got to figure out I think I'm still missing the cable clamp for the throttle so I've got to figure that out and then I can run that so pretty cool stuff and then we can start taking it for for a rip uh, I'll still have some things left to do like running the electrical so I can have a battery uh, doing the electric start but for now I can just do some pull starts and get it back together and go have some fun all right so we just got a coat of primer on everything and uh, let this dry for 20 30 minutes come back we'll shoot it with the uh with the gray gloss that sort of matches and then this will be wrapped up tomorrow i can uh, bolt the engine on for the last time all right, final update for today so i got it all painted uh this is that kind of grayish primer glossy silver that sort of matches the uh, everything else so looks good tomorrow we'll bolt the engine on got the wheels back on got the brake caliper all installed did some checking brakes seem to work fine so uh, it's just tomorrow, let that paint cure overnight, and tomorrow we can bolt that motor on. Good morning, guys. So it's the next day, and uh, today's the day I'm gonna put this engine 
onto the go-kart. So let me kind of show you what I did last night. So uh, I was playing around with some stuff last night. So one is this, uh, this choke bracket. So I ended up having to um, drill a hole in here and there's a boss underneath this, uh, just, um, just like a upright cylinder. So I just drilled the hole. I just found a screw that I had laying around and uh, put this back on, put some Loctite on the screw and I just threaded that thing down. And uh, you can see it still works and the screw stays stationary. It's, it's stuck in there pretty good. I just kind of cross threaded it right in there. Um, so that takes care of that because once we remove that factory air box or a factory air filter thing, um, you know, there was a piece here that held this down so it was no longer there. So this would just vibrate off. The other thing I did was the breather. Uh, so I loaned around, luckily I had a filter laying around and um, I just actually found uh, some brass fitting that I had and uh, luckily it worked and clamped both sides down. Took a zip tie, just put it here to kind of hold it in place. And then the last thing was I felt like the um, spring was a little bit weak, the one that I had here. So when I went to the hardware store today, I just grabbed a second spring and it uh, seems a lot better, a lot firmer. So should have no problem snapping back into place. And then I was going through my toolbox and lo and behold, I found this uh, throttle bracket from uh, probably from one of the GY6 carburetors that I've bought. I've probably bought 10 of them over the years. So I had this laying around. Uh, so I modified it, just drilled a bigger hole so I could get this bolt in here. And so, uh, you know, the engine will be on the cart like this and the throttle can come right through here, the factory throttle. I can screw it, tighten it. And then what I think I'm gonna do is um, just take the end of the stopper and put it through this hole and then maybe I'll zip tie the other side of it and that'll keep it from coming out. And I think that's gonna be kind of a perfect location. So, but if not, I can always do something else like drill a hole here for it to go through. But uh, that's it. And then the other thing I was missing was uh, just some, some big fender washers for the uh, factory mounting bolts. So the ones that I had were a little bit small, so I wanted to go with a little bit bigger ones. So I'm gonna get that, uh, get the engine bolted on. And then originally this GY6 came with a, like a vacuum, a vacuum operated uh, thing to pull fuel from the tank. Um, so we don't have that on this motor. This just comes with a regular uh, on off switch petcock here. So we didn't need that. So I was able to just go to the hardware store and I think this is a 3 8 to 3 8 coupler. And then luckily I had this thing in my toolbox, a 3 8 uh, with the hose barb that fits great for the uh, fuel line. So run that and uh, then we'll be rocking. So let's get to it. All right, so I just sat the engine in and I wanted to work on the throttle. So I got this all buttoned up. What I did was I just found a screw that actually fit through this hole with a, with a nut on the bottom. And I just wrapped the throttle cable through it, got it really tight. Um, I think what I might do just for some extra protection, I'll take a zip tie and I'll just wrap it around both sides of this here. But um, I just have my daughter actually helping me. So throttle seems to work great. So those extra springs really help. So it should be good to go. So next I'll probably throw the bolts in and then I won't tighten it down yet till we get the chain all sorted out. So I bought a, I don't know, 420 chain, I think from go power sports uh somewhere gotta go find it but uh anyway i got uh i don't know a whole bunch of it 10 feet or six feet way way more than i need especially for mine uh it's just going to be a real short run uh so we don't really need a whole lot but at least i'll have a bunch of extra bolts all in just sitting there they're they're not tight so i'm gonna have to adjust the motor but uh, i also popped the gas tank back on and that 3 8 uh, fitting, 3 8 3 8 coupler, works sweet. So got fuel line on. Um, this was actually a fuel line that came with uh, the engine for like the uh, EVAP canister. And it ended up working out being like perfectly long enough. So it worked out great. I've still got to get a uh, fuel filter because I went to the store today and they didn't have uh, kind of the right one, the one that I wanted, like a clear one so I can make sure fuel's flowing. So I see how I pick that up and then I'll cut it and tee it in. But just to, just to get it running and stuff, it's fine. So next, uh, I'm going to start on the chain. I've really had to, you know, kind of cut a chain like this before. So when I ordered this chain, um, I ordered it from Go Power Sports, and I ordered their uh, chain breaker too. So yeah, we'll see. Well, because I'll have to, you know, probably get it to length, and then um, hopefully somewhere in here is like a a master link too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right there. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Chain through the top, and then I just kept rotating this to feed it through. And I just fed it through to a length where it was kind of easy for me to work on. Um, so where it's at right now, it looks like uh, I want to leave that tooth there and then it's going to connect there and I'll have a little bit of slack 
which the plan is to take that up by sliding the engine forward. So I've still got, you know, two, three inches I can go forward and uh, that should give it the slack I need. The only problem with that is the more forward it goes, I'm actually having some interference issue uh, with my air filter. So this guy is hitting this. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure something out for that. Down here, because this is sloping, it seems to work. It just kind of smushes on it, but no big deal. Up here, I don't know, I might have to make a little, uh, tiny little notch out just to help it. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. That's a lesser worry. So yeah, so I'm gonna, I got this guy busted out. So I'm thinking uh, just get the chain in there and crack that thing down and let's see how it works. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm just using this thing for the first time and yeah, there's nothing to it. You just stick that guy in there and get this gold guy so he's touching him and then crank that thing and there's no torque. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of power. It's just easily pushing it right through. Uh, yeah, you can see, look, there's the pin almost all the way out. So yeah, super easy to use. So that's really cool. Forward. Uh, so it's got a little bit of uh, looseness, which I'm thinking how these are, you know, they're supposed to be a little bit slack. And uh, got the bolts all in there. So she's bolted down. And then cool thing was I was actually able to make the air filter work. So uh, yeah, it looks like no problem. I mean, it's resting on there, but it's not anything crazy. And I was able to tighten it down. So all I got to do now is uh, throw some gas in there and I've got to put these fenders back on and then the wing. So we got this big monster rear wing over here. Uh, so I'm going to throw that back on and uh, oh, the cover. So I'll probably put the torque converter cover back on too. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of stickers, maybe throw some Go Power Sports stickers and all this other crap we got on here. Pull it out, it's a beautiful day today. It's like 80 degrees, so get out there and try to see if we can rip it a little bit. All right boys, so she's ready to rock. I just gotta put some gas in and I'm gonna fire it up and take it for a ride down the driveway. Uh, I did put uh, a couple stick, well, one sticker really. I started putting some stickers on the uh, torque converter cover. But then I realized that uh, I don't actually have clearance to slide this in between the uh, shock and the torque converter right there. So this is a little bit too tight. So I'll probably have to, uh, maybe I'll go take it for a ride, make sure everything's cool. If it is, then uh, I'll probably just unbolt the shock and slide it in. Um, only problem is if I'm out there on a trail or I'm up north or something, it'd be a little bit harder to, to take that off just to do an inspection. So. I may end up doing some clearancing. Just kind of kind of chop a little angle of this off. That way I can still slide it in and out and still doing a decent job uh, protecting. So yeah, let's see. Let's take it for a rip. Important, most important part of this whole thing, the wing. Got that thing bolted back on. So now we're ready to put some gas in and go ripper. All right, just got it fired up. So I actually, uh, I'd had the fuel petcock turned on to make the fuel on and it actually was getting some fuel uh, into the air intake and it's dripping out. So I gotta make sure I keep that off. Not sure, uh, maybe a fuel filter will help that slow the fuel down a little bit. But anyway, I shut it off, cranked it a few times, started right up, turned the fuel back on, seems to be running great now. So I'm gonna take it for a little bit. All right guys, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching this build. This one is uh, pretty much done. The only thing we got left, there may be a future episode just to hook up the electric starter and, and maybe some of the wiring for the lights, stuff like that. But otherwise, this build is done. Later.